back to another Music Maker guitar video. Uh, Josh here, as always. Please do like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation. Let's keep this thing going. Um, I do want to say thanks to all the people that have been engaging in some conversations. Um, Susan Palmer left me a uh, question about um, guitar pedals. She said I should do video. Guitar pedals, how do you choose them? How do you get started? Um, obviously, I've got this, like whole thing down here I'll throw a picture up and I've gone through a lot of years to kind of perfect this this gig board and it's kind of one of those things it's like a, it's an ever-evolving process so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you I don't have everything that I've ever owned but I, I'm gonna show you um, kind of the first pedals I have some of my very very nostalgic ones um, Definitely, and then I have some other ones that are, they just don't live on the board anymore uh, because either they don't fit or, you know, just whatever reason. So, that said, on the board, um, I always have kind of some kind of a tuner, um, and right now, uh, something that lives on the board is my amp also. So, um, I don't have as much room for all the pedals that I used to carry around with me because I would carry the amp separate. Um, but the amp living on the board now, it actually condenses a lot of things and it saves me, um, need for like some crunches and stuff. Like I, I have a crunch built in. So that's just like the crunch channel and then I've got a lead channel even. It needs to warm up actually. <laughs> crunch thing going on um now effects that stay pretty much always on for me this uh this, this entire concert <laughs> um i leave a little bit of a um an echo and a little bit of reverb and i actually have for me my reverb dialed into a pedal here so i i have that's like um here if i shut that off that's about like the least amount of reverb that I want most of the time. And then if I use the expression pedal, I can dial in more. Now you can hear there's a lot more in the mix. So what I did, I'm using an even tied H9 to achieve that. And um, a lot of people use this, this pedal for a lot more intricate stuff, but I love simple and uh, Reverb is a nice, simple effect that you can control and, and um, do a lot with. So uh, I like to just have, um, like, the way I set it, it's the dual verb. So it's a stereo reverb. Um, but with the expression pedal, again, I have it set so that it reads my, um, the it's the Dunlop mini volume pedal, expression pedal. Again, just that's what would fit on the board, so I ended up getting one. But that's, again, um, my program. Basically, I saved a dual verb, and then I also saved a little custom setting um, so that this is maybe, I think, maybe 20% on that pedal. And as I go in, it's not a full 100%. I want to say it's like 70 you know, um, because more than that, you start to lose some of the attack of picking and, you know, like I still want rhythm to be in there at all times when I, when I use these kinds of effects. And if I want that to be dulled down, maybe I'll finger pick or I'll do volume swell or, you know, whatever. So that said, I always have that and I use a carbon copy, MXR carbon copy for, um, for, uh, for a little bit of echo. I almost use it like a slap back, but like more of a psychedelic thing than a, than a country thing. Um, so it's like a little bit longer and uh, maybe a little bit more affected on the decay, you know? Yeah, there's a couple, you can hear it, it repeats a couple more times than just a regular slap back. Um, but I like that. have the mix dialed in at maybe 25% on that pedal because I don't again I don't want those echoes to step on anything that I'm doing now this is stuff that I played with over many 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 years of doing these things so why don't I show you some of these pedals that that I kind of came from and um, yeah why don't we start right right with chronological order so first one 
that I had was this one. And this still works. It's a Proco Rat. And the reason I got this pedal and kept it uh, for over 30 years is because um, my guitar teacher, when I first started, he played through one of these. And we'd do a bunch of like Nirvana and, you know, alternative rock songs and stuff like that on this pedal. And um, he always played out of the Rat. I was like, how do I get it, my guitar to sound like John Zahn's guitar? And um, the answer was get a rat so um i i ended up picking one up and uh i've always been able to dial in a little bit of like what i remember from being in the studio with john zahn so john zahn if you're out there watching thank you so much for for what you do i know you're still out there teaching like me so thank you for grinding and putting in the work and inspiring a lot of people um so that said that's uh that's the rat that's my first pedal that i ever ever got and uh, I still have it. It still works pretty good. Sometimes I need to spray some deoxid in there. That's that's about it for this um, for this pedal. Good solid find. If you can find a good Proco Rat, I promise you these things are sturdy and very very solid. So if you plug it in and it sounds good, just grab it. Okay. Um, but that's uh, that's that one. And then I also have. This isn't like my second pedal, but. This is a pedal I had a long time ago, and honestly, the only reason it hasn't been on my board in a long time is because over the years and over the wear and tear, this jack is just kind of messed up. So it still kind of works if you use the stereo out, um, but it's kind of finicky. Like the switch is um, maybe noisy or something. Like I notice it's uh, it's got some some play issues going on with it, and it does affect the tone. So I'm not going to go ahead and plug this in it's not going to be a good representation of this pedal if i have to mess with it and fuddle with it but this is a fantastic chorus pedal um if, if there's amp guys out there maybe around the or sorry not amp guys pedal guys that know how to do like really solid repairs around the lehigh valley please uh let me know because i don't i don't have a guy for pedals at the moment so you know i if they go bad i put them in the corner if they're a great pedal and uh, if we can repair them, we repair them. But like, like I said, I, I don't have a great pedal guy, and uh, this could definitely use a little bit of tightening up if anybody's in, in the mood for doing that. Dropping picks. So, anyways, yeah, that's the 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 electro harmonics uh, harmonics polychorus. Electro harmonics polychorus. Those would uh. One of my early pedals, again, um, that I got, I just, I remember when I started getting into pedals, I, I just would save up, like, all my money and just spend it, you know, like, right away, as soon as it went into my pocket, I was getting a, a pedal. Um, some other pedals I had, and it was just stuff that you mess with. Um, I remember getting a, a TS9 and getting rid of it for whatever reason. I should have probably kept that because it was a good you know, good Ibanez Tube Screamer. Um, I also had uh, a Boss, like, uh, the orange one. I want to say it's an OD2 um, distortion. I had, for a while, the Jekyll and Hyde, which was, like, supposed to be, at least what it said on the box was, um, like a Tube Screamer on one side and kind of like a Big Muff distortion on the right side, and then you could stack them if you like, and, and turn on both distortions and play some really, really heavier stuff. But um, through experimenting with a lot of those things, I kind of found um, that I wasn't liking the distortion stuff as much as I was liking clean stuff. So I ended up messing with Flanders and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and eventually, some multi-effect units. Now, these come in all shapes and sizes. But I thought for today's video, it would be cool to show you this one. Now, this one I was using as my live rig for a long time. This is the Live Master, that L, I want to call it the L8, L7. Because uh, there are seven little places to put effects in here. But this is a really great unit. It's got like a little power supply with it. Um, I stopped using it because I noticed it was... 
making a little bit of noise. So that could just be an issue with the, the thing. Again, if there's pedal people out there that know this stuff, like, please let me know. But um, the reason I wanted to share this in today's video is because this is a, this is like a foreign company that, I, like when I took this on with me, everybody asked like, what the heck is that? Because it's a really cool multi-effect unit. Um, and what it is, is each of these boxes, these actually come out. This is uh, by Biyong, a Chinese company. But um, anyways, each of these little boxes is a clone of something. So this is like a clone of a rat, is what that is. Uh, of course I had to get the rat clone because I'm a rat lover. Uh, and then the chorus is like the boss chorus. Compressor is like a boss com uh, compressor. This one is just a clean boost. I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily colored like any pedal, but it's just, just a clean boost. And then this is cool because, and this was uh, what everybody was wondering, because I used to have this on my board, and what this is here is this is a dedicated effect loop. So say I had like four other pedals, and I wanted to get them switchable and able to turn off with a button on here, I could plug them all in to this loop, and now they're in my signal chain of where I like everything. So I used to um, keep some extra uh, octave pedals and things like that in the loop here so that you could kind of control those just with the button. Um, and then, obviously, delay reverb at the end. Um, and there's a tap tempo and, and all that good stuff on there. Um, and basically what you can do is you can program these to all kinds of different settings or you can kind of use it as a live box and then turn things on and off with uh, these buttons here. And I used to stomp on these little buttons just with my toes. Um, and, you know, they're pretty sturdy, pretty pretty good little thing. Um, but anyways, this is a great, like, little multi-effect unit. And it's a good alternative. A lot of people, like, uh, they get into, like, the Axe Effects and, uh, like, all the Line 6 stuff, which is also great. Um, but for me, I always liked Analog. Um, and I liked that there were other solutions. Um, I remember maybe spending 80 bucks on this, like online, because of a deal that they were having. And I was happy with this for years and years and years because it had everything that I needed. And, you know, if you already have an amp, there it is. You know what I mean? If you don't have an amp and you're looking for the tone, then, like, those Kemper things are great. You know, those little, like, uh, what is it? The Head Rush board is the one that I always see advertised at Guitar Center. It's this, like, ampless system. Um, that stuff's all great. You know what I mean? I'm not going to knock any of it. But I've always been kind of an amps guy. I just like the way amps sound. And, uh, again, this was a really cool alternative to kind of having to have a whole board. And I would say for, like, a beginner, it's just great to be able to get all those options at a cheap price. Some distortion and some chorus and they have like flangers and stuff like that through beyond through the site so you can pick and choose the ones that you want and these little boxes these are only like i don't know i want to say maybe 20 20 bucks or 30 bucks a piece um so you can interchange them and you can mess with your sound over the years if you like that kind of a thing again i think the only reason i stopped using this was because i noticed a little sound and like I don't know, sending stuff to China these days to get fixed is not necessarily the easiest thing. So um, so it kind of sits on the shelf for now. But one of these days, somebody is going to help me out with that and really fix it. Um, only other thing I wanted to really talk about today was power sources. Um, I have again, over here. Sorry if I keep going off camera today. I have two of these things, and, I, and I, this is the ISO 5, um, but I also have the two, um, and essentially these are just really good power sources. I, you can see I keep boxes for everything, but actually this is this lives underneath my board. Um, but here's the mini one. All right. This is actually the one that I used to use. And... Uh, you know, it lives on the shelf in case I want to buy another board one day. But these are great. And they come with all these little connectors to get your pedals powered. These are great because they are they will power all of your stuff with one plug. And 
it will eliminate any kind of like cycle humming that's happening through powering the pedals. I will also testify that this is great. The one spot, right? Uh, this, is, this is great. You daisy chain the thing along and you can power a whole bunch of different pedals just with one plug. But I will say this is a little noisier. I do notice that there's a, there's like a little bit of a, like a, I don't know, if you're playing in a room with fluorescent lights or something, you'll definitely hear them through that. So that said, um, all of those are acceptable, and especially if you're just playing around with stuff and experimenting with stuff. Um, you know, this stuff is not as important, but uh, once you really, really get it dialed in, um, it's important to consider, like, okay, how do I make make something better. Um, it's like I always tell any of my guitar students about their playing, you kind of want to apply the same thing to your, to your gear. Like, okay, this looks good, but do I have a better understanding of how to use it than I did yesterday? Um, and if not, why not? Is it because I'm satisfied? It, it could be anything, but it's important to identify, you know, what those things are for you, and then that way you can make an improvement if you need to. For me, I'm pretty happy with the way this is now, so... I think I'm going to be leaving it for a little bit. But that's because I've evaluated that I'm happy with it. And if I'm unhappy, then I will make that change as I need to go. So, um, I hope that was helpful for you today. Um, you know what, let's do this really quick before I wrap it up. Is let's go through the signal chain. So there's the picture of my pedal board again. Um, here's what's happening. Uh, everything for my internet sound goes into the Big Shot ABY. That's, um... So my guitar goes directly into that. Output A is the pedal board. Output B is my Boss Katana, um, which you cannot hear in the camera, but you can hear it through my recording program here. Boss Katana track right there on the top. So that essentially actually reads as my clean amp now what i am doing there is i do use the amps reverb and delay because i'm a big fan of reverbs i'm a big fan of delays and i'm a glutton for them at this point so yeah i'm gonna stack them all right on top of each other essentially that's my clean amp if i switch on any other effect like this phase 95 here really only hearing that on the Taurus system and then you're actually hearing just a clean signal from the Katana. Or even my loop, it actually only goes to the one uh, amp. So you'll hear that through this and you'll hear that through the Taurus channel in the DAW, but you won't hear that on the Katana. So that makes it so when I'm looping, some of the lead stuff will pop out a little bit more. Again, I'm super picky about this stuff, and this is all stuff I've picked up over the years. I do not expect anybody experimenting with this stuff to really, really, truly understand all of that in depth. It takes a lot of time and practice working with it, and it takes a lot of time recording it and listening back and just going like, I love this, I hate this, I love this, I hate this. And then you try and do more of what you love, you try and do less of what you hate. It's really just a matter of that. Now, on the board, okay, so big shot, one channel goes to the boss, boss goes direct to the interface, um, other slot goes to this Taurus amp, so it goes direct in there, Taurus amp has a dedicated effect loop, so signal chain on the effect loop is this, it's going to the tuner first, that's so that if I need to tune real quick, I don't have to shut off all of my effects, I get just a clean signal going to the tuner. Um, and that way it gives me truest reading. Um, from there, I'm going to my Pigtronics Distortion. Um, I like to have, you know, fuzzes, crunches, distortions um, first in the chain. Um, that way, you know, if there's something like if I wanted to use the octave function on the Eventide H9, um, that way I get a nice little, uh, like, distortion saturation in that effect if I want that. So I think that's important for the signal chain to put those first. It's just preference and uh, a, lot of, a lot of guitar players on the message boards will probably agree with that. Um, 
but it is something that you want to consider as you put your things together. How do you want your effects to color each other? Do you want, uh, for instance, if you have a, uh, an echo pedal and you have a distortion pedal, do you want to have a distorted guitar sound that echoes, or do you want to have an echoing guitar sound and distort your echoes, right? So the, the effects will do, you know, what they're programmed to do in that sense. Um, so it's really fun to just kind of play with what happens there. But that said, this is what I like, is I like distortion kind of first effect in the chain. Then um, I have my phaser after that. Then I have the H9. Um, and again, I use it mostly as a reverb. Um, but that said, it, the H9 does a lot of stuff. So um, I have some other videos about that. If you're interested in exploring some of my favorite H9 sounds, go check that one out. But I do typically just use it as the reverb with the expression pedal, like I, like I mentioned before. I then have that going to the carbon copy. And it looks a little bit out of order if you look there. But um, that's the, the order that I like it in is for the uh, eventide to go to the echo then the echo to go to the loop machine at the very end so that, you know, if I, if I have echoes in my sound, then when I record them in my loop, they're there as well. Instead of having a loop and then having the loop echo. That's not quite what I want to happen. So, um, again, loop machine goes at the end of the chain for me. Other people like it in different places. I know people that put it in the middle of the chain so that they can put some different effects on their loops after the, after the fact, you know. Again, stuff that everybody, I think, should experiment with before you really make the final decision. Um, I do think, like, a lot of people in guitar pedal message boards kind of agree with this order, and um, I agree with a lot of what they say on those message boards, too. So, you know, why not go and read a few of them and get a little bit of a heads up or a tip? Um, if you're on Facebook, Pedal Boards of Doom um, has a lot of people answering questions like that, and... Keep in mind, you're going to get answers all over the board. I'm a uh, more clean effects kind of a guy. You know, being a Pedal Boards of Doom page, people are going to prescribe all kinds of pedal solutions to things. Take everything with a grain of salt, try things out, and, you know, what else can you do, right? Um, but anyways, that's my pedal board. That's my... Uh, that's that's my opinion on pedals. That's what I do with them. That's how I got started. And, you know, it's it's an ongoing journey. Like music, you know, there's, there's always going to be some new thing out there to learn about. There's always going to be some new fad, some uh, maybe some vintage thing that comes back into style. You know, there's always going to be uh, that, like, cool pedal aesthetic thing that happens. I think it's important to follow it but pay attention to what you love the most because that's going to craft your sound it's not about the latest stuff it's about what you like so that said hopefully that was a helpful tone tuesday for all of you guys please do like and subscribe and leave me a comment what are your favorite guitar pedals what do you got on your board what uh what what's what's your sound what's your vibe um i would love to know leave me some comments let's talk about them and uh, I'm going to play my way out. I'll see you tomorrow.